Welcome to part three. What we've done so far is we've created a single link that handles the case of new users by redirecting them to the app store or the play store or a landing page to get them to download the app. In part two, we cover the case of existing users. So if existing users click the link, we open the app on their phone. But what we didn't do so far is for those existing users, we didn't navigate them to specific content inside the app. And that's called deep linking. So in part three, what we're going to cover is if an existing user clicks the link on the phone where they already have the app installed, we are going to take them specifically to the Peaches page of our app, right? To remind you, we're creating an SMS campaign to promote Peaches for the summer. I'm going to navigate to the link that we created. I'm going to edit it and I want to turn it into a deep link. To do that, Mark the marketer, we'll have to work together with Andrea, the Android developer in this case, to agree on the behavior for the link. In this case, what Mark the marketer wants is when an existing user who already has the app installed clicks the link in his SMS campaign is that they get navigated to the Peaches page in the app, not just the home screen. So Mark the marketer and Andrea, the Android developer, decide on a parameter that Mark will set on the link and AppSlyer will pass to the SDK where Andrea, the Android developer, can take that parameter and ensure that apps that were opened from this link will navigate to the Peaches page. Now, Mark and Andrea already had this discussion and what they decided was that they would use a custom parameter called fruit name. And in this specific case, the fruit will be called peaches. Now, they did it this way for a reason. They didn't just want this link to only work for peaches. Mark has a lot of plans for every season of the year and would like to run campaigns for many different kinds of fruit. However, Andrea has a lot of work to do and doesn't want to have to write new code or release a new app version every time Mark has a new idea for a campaign. So what they agreed is to create a dynamic parameter called fruit name, where Mark could change the name of the fruit for each link that he wants to publicize, either over SMS or social media and other owned media. Andrea also had an idea that in the future, because Mark also wants to recommend the number of fruits that uh, his customers should eat every day, Andrea had an idea that while they're at it, let's create another custom parameter called fruit amount. And Mark believes that from the summer, everybody should eat two peaches a day. That sounds good for business. And he adds that parameter to the link. Another option, by the way, is to use AF subparameters, AF sub one, two, three, four, five. They could have also used that parameter. The advantage of using a custom parameter is you can name it anything you want. And the advantage of using a AF sub one parameter, AF sub two parameter, and so on, is those will appear as parameters in the dashboard and in raw data and so on that uh, the marketer can then segment and do all sorts of great analysis with. So there's pros and cons. Now, Mark the Marketer has added these parameters to the link and saved the link. And now what's important is that Andrea, the Android developer, has to handle these parameters when they arrive inside the app from the deep link and make sure that the app actually navigates the user to the particular fruit page, in this case, Peaches. Andrea, the Android developer, and discussed what exactly is going to happen when a user is going to click the link. This is the expected behavior of the application. Together with Mark, they decided on which input is going to be implemented in application. And the input actually goes into a function which is triggered when one link is called and the application is already installed. This is the on app open attribution and it's, it gets um, a dictionary of a map, which is a set of parameters. You can read, Andrea can read all about it here. Now, Andrea needs to implement uh, a logic. So the expected behavior will actually happen. 
And here is an example of how to implement this logic of what is called the in-app routing. And again, if she clicks here, she gets now a, a Java implementation uh, of exactly of an in-app routing. And she can dive into that and send us more questions and have a discussion on how exactly to implement that. But once you get the logic implemented, then everything should work. Let's actually test that since the application is already implemented. We will go to our Android and we will click the link and the pictures is open. So as you can see, this is the expected behavior. They decided on expected behavior. They implemented the input and Andrea, the Android developer implemented the logic inside the application. The application was opened as expected in pictures. And here is the fruit amount, which is two. And now Mark actually can change the fruit amount. Mark the marketer can take that same link. Remember the link has not changed at all this entire time. We've just kept adding behaviors to it. So he can take that link and go back to the dashboard, change the fruit name, change the fruit amount, uh, or create an entirely new link that also has fruit name and fruit amount and never have to ask for any more favors from Andrea, the Android developer, the app will continue to behave according to whatever parameters Mark decides to set on the link, regardless of what season and what fruit and what fruit amount it happens to be in this campaign, without any favors from Andrea or adding more work or requesting any new app updates necessary on the part of the Android developer. So I wanna summarize, we have this single link that we've started with in part one and in each part we've been adding more and more functionality to that link so in some until now what we've done is we've created a link that takes new users who do not have the app to the correct app store or play store in our case a landing page based on their platform and it takes existing users straight to the app opens the app and deep links them straight to the peaches page now there's one more thing we want to do and that's handle the case of new users who go through the process and actually install the app for the first time. We wanna make sure that they also go to the Peaches page after they download and install the app and open it for the first time. And that's what we're gonna cover in part four. See you there.